Okay, so we're going to finish off the analysis of compensation using a Bode analysis uh, for the two-stage op-amp with the uh, Miller compensation capacitor. So we found previously what our pole and zero frequencies were. We know that these are both left half-plane poles and a right half-plane zero. We can estimate our phase margin with the following equation. So we know our phase margin is equal to 180 degrees plus or minus the change from each of the poles and zeros. We expect that the uh, omega P1 is going to be dominant, and it's a, right half, a left half plane pole, so it will have a minus arc tangent of omega divided by omega P1. We expect that the zero or pole frequency uh, for the second pole and, and the first zero can be uh, interchanged, uh, so we're just going to say minus tangent of inverse of omega divided by omega p2 minus tangent inverse of omega divided by omega z1. And note that it's a minus because it's a right half plane zero rather than a left half plane zero. Uh, this is a problem for us because a right half plane zero actually increases the uh, the negative change in, fa in phase while uh, causing the amplitude to flatten out. Okay, now at the frequencies that we're going to be interested in, if we want to find the, the, the coefficient for compensation, we know that at high frequencies, this arc tangent is going to go to approximately 90 degrees uh, because the arc tangent of a very large number is approximately 90 degrees. We're going to be trying to figure out what the relative relation between the unity gain bandwidth and omega p2 is. So we're going to leave that one in terms of its symbolic variables. And we know that the zero should hopefully be at a very high frequency uh, it, as long as the uh, GM of the second stage is very large. So the GM of the second stage uh, is going to be, uh, or the, the uh, arc tangent of that is going to be a very small number. So we're going to approximate it as zero. Using this for any desired uh, phase margin, we can figure out what coefficient we need to have for the relation between the gain bandwidth or unity loop gain frequency and omega p2. Okay, let's go ahead and plot the response. So our amplitude response would look something like this. We know that we're going to have a dominant pole, omega p1. Uh, the zero and, and uh, pole for the uh, second pole can be interchanged, but we'll go ahead and plot this uh, as omega p2. And then we'll say that our zero is at a very high frequency, omega z1. So if we were to plot this, we would get the following response. Let me make this a little bit more subtle so that we can fit it on the same graph. So namely, what we have here is minus 20 dBs per decade roll off. In this section, we have minus 40 dBs per decade roll off. And in this section, it goes back to minus 20 dBs per decade. It's hard to see the points of inflection, uh, but uh, just pretend like I'm a better artist. OK, and looking at the phase response, uh, we have our phase start from 0. At the first pole frequency, it's 45 degrees, asymptotically approaching 90. At the second pole frequency, we get another 45 degrees, so it should be 135, and it will asymptotically approach 180. And then at the zero, at this final zero frequency, we should be at minus 225, and it will asymptotically approach 270. Okay, so one of the problems that we see uh, with this uh, type of response is that the right half plane zero exacerbates our problem. And the problem is we don't want to have a lot of gain when the phase response reaches minus 180 degrees. Here what we see the right half plane zero doing is increasing the negative phase response, or I should say decreasing the total phase towards that minus 180 degree number while 
keeping the gain higher than it would otherwise be if this were only a two-pole system. I just want to remind you how you size the compensation capacitors based on finding the coefficient uh, here. And we know that the compensation capacitor is equal to gm1 divided by omega p2 times a closed loop. And this is for a 45 degree phase margin. If we want a larger phase margin, we actually have a coefficient that we can find from the above expression and it is equal to 1.73 times gm1 divided by omega p2 times acl. This would give us a 60 degree phase margin. Now it makes sense that we need a larger compensation capacitor to achieve a higher phase margin. Of course, when we design these amplifiers, we don't want to use any larger capacitor than is necessary to achieve the desired phase margin. 45 degrees phase margin gives us the fastest settling, uh, assuming that we allow some reading, and 60 degrees uh, gives us the fastest phase margin, assuming uh, the fastest settling, assuming that we uh, can't have any ringing. Okay, with that, we uh, still have to take care of the right half plane zero, and we will learn how to take care of the right half plane zero uh, in the next uh, set of notes.